Hello, beautiful homemakers. I really hope that most of you were able to tune in this week, the week of August 19th, 2024, to lauradoyle.org's Adored Wife Challenge. If you were unable to do so and you're listening to this later, she holds her challenge, her free challenge, twice a year. And I highly suggest that you listen to her podcasts. And if your marriage is in a really bad place, maybe he's moved out, or you're living in separate rooms, you're not speaking to each other, there's no fun in your marriage, and you feel like you're on the road to divorce, definitely get her book and maybe even look into her coaching One of the first things she has you do is self-care. And I want to talk today about the difference between self-care and being selfish. Many women, I think especially Christian women, feel guilty when they take time for themselves because they feel like there's so much to do, so many Other people need help, and we're doing great. We've got all these blessings. We don't need to take time for ourselves. We just need to get through our lists. But that's not true. In Laura Doyle's book, The Empowered Wife, on page 27, she says, Doing something pleasurable means it feels good in the moment you are doing it, not afterward. She's trying to define self-care. So like one woman had said, oh, I did the laundry. That was my self-care. And she's like, that is not self-care. It has to feel good in the moment you're doing it, not afterward. And yet there really are a few women out there that love doing laundry. They like hanging their clothes on the line. To them, being out in the sunshine, folding those clothes, That's self-care for them. But she goes on to say on page 28, Housework is not and never will be self-care. Not like singing and dancing or going to a party or getting a massage or sneaking off to read or having a piece of chocolate and coffee. Whatever it is that gives you that happy lift. Now I'm going to break that down for you just a little bit. Housework is not and never will be self-care. And yet, on my self-care list is puttering. Puttering around your house when it's quiet. Maybe you're alone. You don't have the radio on. You don't have a podcast going. There's no TV. You're just thinking thoughts in your head. Maybe you're singing silently to yourself. Or or maybe you're singing out loud. And you are just putting your house to rights. I find that I do this every Friday. And then I look back and I think, oh, that was so nice. Ugh, I love the peace of this. I love that I'm not on task doing my to-do list. I'm not listening to anything on YouTube. I'm just being peaceful in the moment. YouTube can help us multitask and we can learn so much from it. But we also need peace quiet, silence. She goes on to say, not like singing and dancing. Now, I love singing. I love singing a cappella. Since I grew up in an a cappella church, I learned how to sing, and I can sing anywhere. I sing at home. I know that singing actually has physical health benefits for you. Isn't that amazing? And she says, dancing. I'm not a dancer. I never have been. Doesn't bring me joy. She says, it's whatever is for you. Dancing is not for me. Going to a party. A lot of people love to get together with a lot of people and have impromptu parties or planned parties. For me, going to parties is often a chore because I'm an introvert. I would rather have one-on-one time with people. And I had to tell one of my party friends this. I just came right out and said, you know, you have all these birthday parties. I'm always there. We usually have a good time. 
But then she was having a Christmas party, and I said, you know what? December is stressful enough without throwing parties into the mix. I said, I won't be there, not because I don't love you, but because parties don't energize me. They take away my energy. This woman throws a lot of parties. Even when I have a good time, I meet new people. Sometimes I'm walking to my car and I meet a person and we'll get into an hour conversation and I've had a lovely time. But not in the cold of December when I have so much on my plate. And she thanked me for telling her so that she wouldn't feel slighted. Janine never comes to my Christmas parties. Laura says, getting a massage. You know, oh, oh, I love massages. When I worked, I got massages often at a spa. And then I had my child and was home. And I hadn't had a massage in about 18 years when my mom booked one for me and her as a thank you for helping her. And that massage did my body so much good. And I really thought I was going to book a massage today. I thought I was going to wake up this morning when the spa opened around the corner from my house and say, which I've never been to, but I've passed by a hundred times. And I was going to say, you know, do you have any openings today or Wednesday? But because I had taken such good care of my body this weekend, stretching, stretching out my sore shoulder that I'd had all weekend, I woke up feeling fine. I don't need a massage. So I'm going to go and do something else on my list. She says, sneaking off to read. Well, we're going to talk about that a little bit more in depth later. Having a piece of chocolate and coffee. For me, that is not self-care. Chocolate will often give me heartburn, so it's no longer self-care. Coffee. When I was eight years old, I decided I was not going to drink coffee. And I am so glad that I can wake up every morning without a caffeine headache or needing that caffeine, I wake up pretty darn joyful because I'm not dependent on that drug caffeine. But for most of you, coffee is going to be on your self-care list. Before I tell you what is on my list, I want to talk about what is self-care and what is selfish. Shopping for clothes that fit the body you have today in your own colors that can be self-care. Now, if you say, oh, I hate shopping. Well, okay, that's not going to be self-care for you. But many women do enjoy that. But what is not self-care is shopping for clothes that fit and are your color, but putting them on a maxed out credit card because you don't have the cash to pay for them. That is not self-care, even though you had fun shopping. Because afterward, you know that you have just cursed yourself. You're going to feel guilt. You're going to feel heavy. The burden of debt makes you feel heavy. Self-care needs to bless you. Putting things on a credit card that you cannot pay off when due is a curse, not a blessing. So instead, you need to save every bit of cash you can in a place in your house so that you can then take that cash and go to a consignment shop or thrifting or to a garage sale or to TJ Maxx or Old Navy, a place like that, to find the clothes that fit your body. Self-care could be getting lost in a really good book, but it's not self-care when instead of doing the necessary work, like maybe your morning work, which then makes you feel behind all day. Again, you've just cursed yourself instead of blessing yourself. The way around that is you do the needed morning work, like maybe putting the dishes into the dishwasher or starting a load of laundry, whatever your necessary morning work is. And then you put on your phone a reminder that's going to ding at you know, 10.30 in the morning or whatever time is best for you. And it says, read for self-care. All my life, my mother taught me that reading is a reward. I always wanted to get lost in a book, but she would say, do your work. Reward yourself with a chapter or maybe three, depending on how long the chapters are. 
and then go do the next step of that work and then reward yourself again. This is how I get so many books read. Many are going to put on their list of self-care, going to the gym or Pilates, if they really enjoy that type of thing. Let me tell you what is not self-care. Going to the gym and putting your children into the gym's care center where they cry because they want to be with you. Oh, they'll be fine, the worker says, or whoever is watching your child says. As soon as you leave, they'll snap out of it. No, you've just crossed the line to selfishness. But I need to work out. You do not have to work out at a gym. You do not have to work out in a way that keeps you from your children. That's selfish. And why is it selfish? because you can find other ways to exercise without imposing on your child's time with you. They need you. One day, your children aren't going to want to do things with you. So don't have any regrets over their tears of leaving them with someone else so that you can try and get that beach body. Exercise in a way that pleases them too. Teach them to exercise with you. Small children, you take them to the park. You let them play while you exercise. Very simple. You take them on walks with you. You put them in a stroller and you run. Even though I don't think running is a great exercise for most women because it typically hurts your body in the long run. Okay, I mentioned that on my list of self-care is putting the home to rights with a good long self-care video such as Homemakers Radio with Lydia Sherman. If you're not familiar with her, you can look that up. What is not self-care is cleaning out a closet by pulling everything out and making a bigger mess and then feeling overwhelmed, and then leaving things because you get called away. Not self-care. If you find yourself doing this, go to Dana K. White's website. She's an excellent author. I've heard her on the uh, Take Your House Back program with Cass and the Minimal Mom, Clutterbug and the Minimal Mom. I heard Dana say that her first love is writing. She's a published author, three books. I've read two of them. They are so good. So motivating. Of course, I found Dana after I had figured out how to do exactly what she says myself 20 years ago. We were learning at the same time. But Dana K. White has a no mess decluttering method that I personally have been using for years, long before she ever wrote about it. Self-care can be discarding all the clothes that don't suit you. Not your size, not your color. Pack them up, put them away, or better yet, give them away. But it's not self-care when you berate yourself about it. So if you're going to berate yourself, then you cannot put that on your self-care list. Self-care is getting out in nature. Because it's so good for our bodies. But it's not self-care when you're dragging along children who are whining because they don't want to be there. Or if maybe you've all of a sudden said, huh, let's go do this hike. But you don't have all the proper shoes, the proper clothing. You did no preparation. You don't even have water or snacks. That's not self-care. If you live in the city and you say, oh, there's no nature around me. Oh, yes, there is. Every city has an arboretum. Every city has parks. You find that. A massage is self-care unless you are putting it on a maxed out credit card. Self-care may be going out and doing something with your girlfriends. But it's not self-care if you're putting it on a credit card that you can't pay. And it's selfish if you are leaving your children with a sitter. 
Now, if you're leaving your children with your husband, that's fine because children belong with their fathers as much as with their mothers. If you're leaving your children with their grandparents or another close relative, that's fine. But when you're leaving your children with a friend or other babysitter and your children don't want to be there and they want you, then that's selfish. Your babysitter is not going to love your children the way you do or the way a family member does. Maybe watching cat videos is self-care for you. But then you set a timer and you say, I'm only going to do this for 10 or 15 minutes. Maybe getting a cat or a dog would be self-care. Playing a board game with your child. Just try it. You guys are going to have so much fun. You're going to look back on that and love it. And then you'll find out, wow, I thought self-care had to be selfish. No, it doesn't. Now I am going to go over what is on my self-care list from many years ago when I first heard of the Ridiculously Happy Wives Club by Laura Doyle. She had us write a list of 20 things and I could only come up with 19. Practice self-care for your own pleasure three times a day. This is what I have. Massage. Reading. Laying down and listening to homemakers radio, etc. Blog or write. I used to be very into that. Walk or exercise. At that time, I was very active. Being on the backyard swing for 20 minutes. Just chilling or, you know, watching the squirrels or reading. Taking a bath. Putting on makeup every day. Shopping. Doing crafts. Going out to tea. Shopping at Sugar Plum, which is a pop-up boutique near me. Go to a park. Go to a new library. I love visiting libraries. Whenever I see a library, I usually stop off and see if they have books for sale or just check it out. There are so many wonderful libraries everywhere. And when I was in Ferndale, California, which is an old Victorian town from the 1800s, all the homes are still there. They have an original Andrew Carnegie library that I stopped in and talked to the librarian about. Going out to eat. Go to a museum. Read a magazine. Take an afternoon walk. Or have sex. In fact, Jennifer Flanders who wrote the book, Love Your Husband, Love Yourself. She has an excellent website. Well, she gave me permission to share her handout on seven reasons wives need to give their husbands more sex. Studies show that having an active sex life within the context of marriage packs as many benefits for women as it does for men. Number one, better health. Sex boosts immune function and protects against a whole host of diseases. Your immunity, longevity, circulation, and fertility all go up, and your risk of cancer, stroke, heart disease, and hypertension all goes down. Sex gives you a more youthful appearance. Couples who have sex four times per week look ten years younger than their actual age. It gives you leaner muscles, stronger bones, more supple skin, thicker, glossier hair, better posture, increased confidence, and more vibrant energy. Number three, it gives you peace of mind. Sex promotes good mental health as well as physical health. It lessens stress, reduces anxiety, relieves tension, improves cognition, and alleviates depression. Four, it'll give you marital stability. Sex does for a marriage what good landscaping does for a house. It adds beauty and protects the foundation. In fact, any time you have something hard to talk to your husband about, good time to do that is right after having sex while you guys are still naked. Five, it gives you clout and credibility. Does your relationship to your husband reassure your kids that sex is worth the wait? 
or do your constant excuses convince them that they had better enjoy it while they can? Because once they get married, they'll never see any action. Good point. Love, Jennifer. She's so open about this subject. Number six, weight control. Sex burns calories, tones muscles, and reduces cravings. Seven, amazing return on investment. Very few things in life pay such incredible dividends on so small an investment of time as making love to one's spouse. Fifteen minutes a day can lead to a lifetime of health and happiness. Her blog is called Loving Life at Home. She also has a podcast. Now, just last night, I redid my self-care list. What would be on my list today? And when I was reading to you the old list, I've noticed that several things I wouldn't want to do anymore, such as take a bath. I'm really not into that anymore. Do crafts. Eh, done enough crafts in my life. Don't want to do that anymore. Go to a museum? Maybe. I've done almost all that I really have wanted to do. I've got one or two more left that I would like to do. Read a magazine? Nope. That's no longer on my list. This is what's on my new list. Ooh, I start off with the same thing I did last time. Massage. Really like that. And I put something on for number two that I've never done before. That sounds really good. Going to the spa for foot reflexology. Mm, I want to try that one day. Number three, I put clothes shopping. Four, sugar plum shopping. Five, going out for Italian food. Six, singing a cappella. Seven, going to church. Going to church is self care? Absolutely nothing better. Eight, reading. Nine, swinging or reading or lazing on the backyard swing. And I have not done that in several years. I need to get that cleaned up and do it again. Ten, having sex. Eleven, walking. I do that twice a day when I can, which is most days. Twelve, going to the beach in the morning. My husband's vacation week is next week, and that is going to be one thing we do. Thirteen, creating empty space in my house. When I made the decision to get rid of our recliner that we had stopped using, we needed it a lot when my son was little and we would rock him and you know put him side by side with you in the recliner to read, but we don't need it anymore. And it took up a lot of space. It was sagging in places. I said, I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm not going to fill up the space. Oh, that made me feel so good. And now I have this empty space that also makes me feel good afterwards. Every time I see so much space in that room now, I just love it. 14. Teaching Sunday School. Yes, that's a lot of work. But it is so joyful to plan these surprises for the children, like the loaves and fishes, bringing out little oyster crackers and little fishy crackers on a tray, but underneath the napkin is a whole bunch of loaves and fishes. And then as they're praying, you whisk away the five loaves and two fishes, and then they open up their eyes and, oh, there's all these fishy crackers and loaves. So fun to do things like that. Love teaching Sunday school. 15. Having lunch with friends. It's important to keep up with your friends. It doesn't always have to be something where you spend money, but with each friend I do something different. We kind of have our own thing that we do. With my prayer partner, we would go for a walk for an hour, and then we would pray for an hour. She just moved across the country. Number 16. Doing genealogy, or scrapbooking, or putting pictures on find a grave. 17. Puttering around my house, putting it to rights. 18. Being alone. 19. Petting my kitties. And 20. 
doing my Bible study. I'm doing a study on World Video Bible School, and it is excellent. Loving it. That is definitely self-care for me. Another one of my favorite things to do is I attend a group called Sisters in the Spirit. We get together and have lunch. Sometimes somebody will host lunch, and sometimes we just bring our own lunch. It's always after church on a Sunday, about once a month. And this talk was given by Tamara. It was called Eliminate the Hurry. She had us play three games. And the first one was being on teams and wrapping someone up in toilet paper. The next one was sucking up a fishy cracker with a straw and then placing it into another bowl. And the third one was balancing dice on a tongue depressor. After we played the game, she said, now I want you to write down what you felt, acted, and said. So what I felt was both dread and happiness, because it was fun. How did I act, even though it was kind of like, oh no, why do we have to do this? I laughed, and I smiled, and I had a good time. What did I say when she announced these games? I said, oh no. How did others feel? This is what they said. Some said they felt awkward, stressed. Some felt relaxed and confident. Some were focused. Some realized that they needed teamwork and one person realized that she was really competitive. Another said that she noticed that when she's stressed, she becomes loud and even obnoxious. So then Tamara related this to, what do we feel, act, and say when we are under daily stress? Mainly, we have a bad tone. We scream or we yell and we're sarcastic. We may whine. We may drive like crazy women whipping around other cars. We might curse or answer tersely or sigh and roll our eyes. We may show anger and stress causes an underlying anger in us. We all think that if we can just get organized enough, if we can just complete our task list, then we can begin to relax and enjoy life. We're gonna have fun then. We just can't take the time for a morning Bible study. No time for prayer. There is too much work to do. Yet the reality is that it is only when we place God first that we are given the peace, the love, and the tranquility that we need to complete our daily life tasks. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I think that's Luke 12, 31. I know it's hard to do in the morning, and you may have to do it at lunch. You may even have to do it after the children are in bed, sitting up, not laying down. But beautiful homemakers, I want you to turn off your phone. I want you to pick up your Bible and read a chapter or two. I want you to pray and then I want you to go write your list of 20 real self-care items. What do you enjoy doing? What makes you smile? Because doing these things for yourself is going to make you a more joyful person and that is the most important thing your husband wants in you. Joyfulness. May God bless you ladies as you learn to take care of yourself, put the Lord first, and walk in joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength.